All right, we are on the air. Welcome back to the wild times. This is our 44th week in a row, no breaks, of recording the number one wildlife slash comedy podcast in the galaxy. Not on planet Earth, it's not in the, world, in the world, in the galaxy. That's a big to do, oh, yeah. guys. In the known universe, if we want to be scientific. Yeah, but yeah, whatever. Yeah. Aliens it's, are death it's watching. It's in outer, out of space. Yeah. It's in out of space. Yeah. It's in out of space. <laughs> um, how are you guys? Ritep, what's a good word, man? I'm uh, I'm pissed today because Pat's, Pat's taken my fucking, he's taken my trademark top knot look and it, and it looks like, I, I, it looks like a fucking macaque monkey put it on top of his head. It's on the side. Uh, just get, get rid of that thing. Hey, what the fuck? Uh, what I choose to do with my hair should be of little concern to you. Sir. I got to look are you at you. Looking? Why do you stare at me so much? <laughs> it's very I, strange. I got a message from an old friend of 20 years who was watching live, and it was just a diatribe about how big of a douche I am and how much he hates me. Oh, boy. And mm, I was like, I saw it. in my head, I'm like, why the fuck is it? It's because he's staring at me the whole time, even though there's like all this other <laughs> shit going on, you know? So I yeah. get that, yeah. Well, don't so, be too pissed. Let's have some fun. Yeah, for yeah, sure. let's have a good yeah, time. I'm in a good mood. All right, Cheers, well, man. that's that's good, Ritep, Mr. Mr. Producer. That's good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Patrick, you know, for those yeah. that are, are listening on iTunes, this is the first time in 44 straight weeks that any of us have ever seen, that's the first time in seven years of friendship, I don't know about Ritep, that I've ever seen Papa P, the one and only, the producer, rocking a man bun. It's quite a look. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've committed think? to, okay, here's the thing. I've committed to just, I was getting some haircuts during COVID, right? Okay. It exploded in LA. And uh, I committed to just like not doing dumb shit, right? Yep. So I was like, you know what? I can X out the haircuts. I mean, it's somebody I barely know breathing on my fucking head, mm -hmm. even though they've got a mask on. So that said, I haven't had long hair since I was 17. I decided to pop a little rubber band in the top. I've had the best day in months. <laughs> Dude. Not dealing with the hair, no hat squeezing my head. Mm -hmm. I'm good, man. I, I yeah. respect that. Uh, uh, I, have a, I have an opinion on your general aesthetic. Overall, uh -huh. it's not positive, but specifically tonight <laughs> sure. is uh, just that you should go. Like, I'm, I'm currently obsessed with the show Peaky Blinders. Every waking moment that I have that I'm not working, okay. I'm, I'm watching Peaky Blinders. It's, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. I would love it if you went, I, I Googled this, went for the undercut, which is the shaved side and back with the long on top, with just like, it's like a sure. hard line. Yeah. It's not like a nice casual yeah. gradient to the top of your hair. It's just like a hard line. Yeah, mate. And find I, okay. your own fucking look. Yeah. Stop stealing mine, I'll, dickhead. I'll do that. Forrest, I'll do that for the next podcast if you do. If I this do? This is great. Yeah. Uh, dude. Yeah. Oh, man, that's ballsy. I, That'd be sweet, dude. I'm not be, committing, but I'm bros. also not saying no. I'm going to think about it. Forrest is under contract. Dude, he can't change his appearance too much. Use that excuse to get out of it. Yeah, sure. That's not true, but yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> dude, I uh, So this. what's up with you this week, Forrest? Yeah. I know you've been busy doing all sorts of shit out there doing your influencer program, making news. What? Yeah. Speaking of news, though. This is a wildlife show. Let's let's kick it off on the right foot. What tickled your fancy this week? Yeah. What's in it? Um, look, there's a lot. There's there's a lot of fun stuff going on in the news this week. Um, there's some interesting whale news. There's something coming out. There's there's all kinds of good stuff. But there's one sure. thing that I thought was just silliness. Just I mean just just ridiculous nonsense coming out of Singapore. And these silly Singaporeans, because they have started, there's a doctor there, Dr. Ark, who has started a booming business where exotic fish owners are getting cosmetic surgery for their pet fish. Yeah. Yep, this that's right. Great. You heard me right, baby birds. Do there is a Dr. Ark who is a self-taught, not a real doctor. <laughs> oh, um, good. Yeah, yeah, no, not, not, probably not even his name. <laughs> who has created a menu of cosmetic procedures for people to perfect their fish, as he puts it. 
Uh, most often people, so there's a fish called a red arowana. It's actually an animal that could be extinct in the wild. It's something I've considered looking for because they were all captured from Borneo, where they come from, and put into the pet trade because they're unbelievably beautiful. Will, Will, do me a favor, pull up a picture of a red arowana. I mean, striking, beautiful fish. Well, in case they weren't naturally beautiful enough, Dr. Ark has said, hey, people with red arowanas, and really any kind of arowana, but specifically red arowanas, if you, uh, if you want me to make a home visit, you know, perform a little vanity surgery for your fish, I'm your guy. And he comes over, he does fish facelifts, fish eye correction surgery if they've got droopy eyes. He removes blemishes on scales oh and does, this is, the, this is the best one, he does fin enlargements. I mean, yeah, okay. So I saw there's one guy. So this red arowana is an expensive fish. People spend a thousand Singapore dollars, whatever yes, that. Yes, very know expensive. What the trend. Uh, they're okay. like they're like fifteen twenty grand here in the states. Okay. So here's a quote from uh, Desmond Yee, who had just bought a thousand dollar red arowana, um, and he was really excited. He said he's excited about the prospect of having a perfect fish. Um, and after the procedure that Dr. Ark did, he said, quote, he's still got a few parts that need touching up. Uh, so Jesus. he's not perfect so, yet. You know, he's, right? he's OK. Here's, here's what I love about shit like this. I, I've been uh, seeing a lot of uh, non-traditional doc, doctors. They actually are doctors, uh, mm-hmm. acupuncturists and, and uh, like chiropractors and shit for uh, mm-hmm. some shit I've had going on with my ears. And it's hilarious because here's a quote from the article where, uh, where he says he, he thinks that giving the fish a better appearance is, quote, a good deed. The owner will be more affectionate to them. And, like, it's just hilarious because I've experienced this in every one that I've gone to that's not a traditional medical doctor. They're, they're always, like, have some selling, salesy, marketing point, like some spin on it. Like, it's going to cure everything that's wrong with you. Even if it doesn't fix your problem, right. you're going to feel oh, better. Yeah. Like, you know? Right. So yeah. I always find that there's, amusing. There's a place in Beverly Hills called Ron's Tea Garden. Uh, not a sponsor. But it's a whole herbal, <laughs> Chinese herbal medicine shop. Uh-huh. And it's just real expensive. Yeah. Um, and so I, I have a buddy who... He's like a big time personal trainer to the stars, you know, trains LeBron James during the off season. Like he's, he's really well researched and into this shit. Mm-hmm. And he, he told me to come meet him at Ron's tea garden is that they make these dope teas. Right. And he's like, it's all these like natural herbs and shit, but he's really into this shit. So I went and I got this tea that was supposed to be like your energy and focus tea. Cause I was writing okay. that day. Mm-hmm. Okay. It legit felt like drugs. Yeah, like, man. Not psychosomatic, like uh, no bullshit. It, I really felt like they had just crushed up, and they, and they may have just crushed up Adderall and put it in my tea, <laughs> dude. Yeah, but it was fucking intense. So it man. wired you. You actually felt something. But like, why? Here's what it, here's what it felt like. I didn't feel wired jittery like caffeine. It just felt like I was like super locked in and like every like. Clair- mental clarity that I had not experienced in a long time. It was clear that I was on something. Right. Wow. It was interesting. Dude, yeah, I don't wow. know what was in that shit. Not, not, to, huh. not to, as you guys say, dog leg too much, but I'll tell you this. It's, it's funny that we think that just because it's not like a prescription drug or like, dude, right. you, you can get fucking fucked up. Remember when they were selling uh, the basically amphetamines in, in that shit over the counter way back in the day that was like, yeah, yeah I mean, it's like well, dude, take a psilocybin mushroom. If you don't think just eating an herb or plant <laughs> yeah, can yeah. fuck you up, great point. Like, such a take good a little tiny mushroom, or there's you know, eat one poison berry and see how you feel. Like clearly, right. yeah. plants can have a major effect. I don't know if they can cure your uh, inability to get an erection permanently, but <laughs> maybe they help you out in the moment. Well, hey, do you think that giving a fish a facelift is uh, actually? I don't understand the mentality behind it. Is it a good it. deed for us as a biologist? No, Would you say it's a good no. deed to kick it's a fish in terrible. the face? I don't. If if there's anybody outside of Doctor Ark himself who thinks that this is a good deed, <laughs> just just look in the mirror and just say it out loud. Just say to yourself. Just stand in a mirror, look at yourself dead in the eyes, and say, 
Is giving a fish co- cosmetic surgery a good <laughs> deed? And if you're, you come away with anything but the answer no, you, sir or ma'am, are a complete buffoon. <laughs> because fish don't need facelifts, and that is, I am taking a hard stance on that. <laughs> That's a fucking shirt. Oh, man. And if I wasn't so fucking lazy, I'd make it tonight. <laughs> there um, you go. Fish so don't for need us, I, wanted to get, I wanted to get both yeah. of your opinions on this piece of news. And don't let's eat. not do this. I don't want, let's not turn this into, oh, what a bummer. Okay. Okay. Let's not That's do fair. that. Because we can Peter. all agree you shouldn't <laughs> mistreat animals. Peter. Uh, <laughs> yeah, right. right. I love animals more than even you two. You guys might be smart, but I love fucking animals. So You do have a lot of love in that heart of yours. So yeah. retailers nationwide are dropping chow cow coconut products. Uh, coconut water, coconut milk, all the, all the things you can derive from a coconut. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Stores are starting to refuse to sell them because uh, PETA has discovered that they are enslaving monkeys as oh, forced labor. Uh, they have chains around their necks and they have taught them to pick coconuts all day with chains around their necks. And here's the worst part. They're not paying. <laughs> they're not giving them a paycheck. <laughs> Well, yeah, they are monkeys. <laughs> but they're primates. I feel like minimum wage applies to all primates. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's fair. Man. That's fair. This, what's, your, yeah. what's your thought about this? It's a Ritem, bummer. take it away. Yeah, I mean, my thought about this is, okay, it's fu- I hate it. I mean, it, it's like when I come across okay. some... We, we all agreed that part. It's bad. All right, relax. Yeah. Stop, uh, stop interrupting, you fucking top notch. I hate when you rant about negative shit. You I'm not, I'm not. I'm just, I'm, I'm just saying, I'm going to say this. <laughs> fucking monkeys are used for all kinds of research purposes and other fucking shit. And it's, I mean, I guess just add it to the list of fucking things that Pete is going to complain about. I don't agree with it. I don't think they should fucking have chains around their necks and be, and be fucking picking coconuts all day, man. Fuck coconuts and fuck PETA. Wait, Ooh, wait. I, I don't know coconuts. if that makes sense. Uh, no, you like no, you no. like PETA. I don't know if I <laughs> no, like PETA well, We're going to go on a whole other rant about oh, PETA very oh, shortly boy. after okay. this. I got a whole other thing that we're going to get into uh, about PETA very soon. But, okay, look. <laughs> Here's my opinion. It's a bummer. We've all agreed on that moving forward. Yeah. yeah. It's also hilarious. Okay. The fact that the New York Post has a headline about monkey labor or forced monkey slave labor or whatever. Stop it. Obviously, stop it. Obviously, if this is true, nobody wants to see abused monkeys with chains around their necks. Patrick, you and I have seen it in, uh, where did we find, remember that little monkey with the chain around his neck? I think it was Indo. I don't um, remember. Jesus. I don't either. Yeah. But you remember, I remember what we couldn't about? show it. We couldn't show it on TV. They said it was too sad. Yeah. And I was like, you know, like I didn't want to buy it because that perpetuated it. And he was just sitting there with that little chain on his neck. It was awful. Yeah. But Ugh, I've something. seen it. It's, it's terrible. Mm. But the fact that there's a New York Post headline about forced monkey slave labor is I, I, I'm not heartless. It's very funny. It's like something that you would see in The Simpsons as a headline. It is. <laughs> yeah, it, is. it really it's is. True. But yeah. this is how elaborate. This is how elaborate. So this is in Thailand. They have okay. coconut farms there. This is how elaborate the operation is. They have on every single farm. They said they have forced monkey labor. They also have okay. multiple training facilities where they train the monkeys to pick the coconuts. Um, that means. Someone had this idea right, <laughs> and implemented it yeah. by setting up a massive, probably multi-million dollar operation. Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, think about that conversation. Like the CFO comes in and is like, man, our margins are just shit. I mean, coco- should we get out of the coconut? Should we get into papaya? Uh, <laughs> Well, what's our main cost? The labor. It's killing us. It's <laughs> well, This is an yeah. accurate depiction of what it probably was like. I'm, that's yeah, probably what it Can was. you imagine how much that guy got laughed at when he first pitched it to? And then, you know, fast forward nine months, he's like, I fucking told you. Well, and yeah. then yeah. Yeah. Like, look at that monkey York. up that tree picking that coconut. I fucking told you. Yeah, but now fast forward <laughs> to this article and they're getting fucked. So it, it all comes yeah. around. Okay. You know, and there's... There, Sorry, I was going to say there's varying levels of that, right? I don't agree with any animals being mistreated. We all know that. But, you know, in in China, there are, I think it's China. I'm not actually sure. There are these fishermen that use cormorants. You know, cormorants, the birds. Mm. Um, And they have these cormorants with these little rings around their neck, which I know sounds terrible, but bear with me. And on those rings, 
Uh, well, or rather, they have this whole flock of cormorants, which are flying birds that can also dive and fish and hunt underwater, right? And they do this thing with these cormorants where they train them, they catch the cormorants, and they, they go out on the boats, and the cormorants dive in off the bo boats and go out and catch fish, and they come back to the boat and start to try and swallow the fish. And as the fish gets to the ring, if it's too big, the cormorant spits it up and it lands on the boat. And then the cormorant goes, I can't eat that, and goes back to fishing, right? Now, any fish that's a certain size, the cormorant swallows and is very happy. And any fish that's too big, which is obviously perfect for fishermen, the cormorant ends up eating. Now, this is, or sorry, the, the, the cormorant oh, the, gives up and right. the, the fisherman ends up eating. And this, has become, this is an age-old tradition that has been around for, I don't even know how long, obviously, but, you know, it's been around forever of these guys raising these cormorants to go fishing with them and have this kind of symbiotic relationship where the guys will, you know, they'll paddle around and basically find the fish. Then the cormorants will hop in the water and do all the heavy lifting. The cormorants get a nice place to sleep at night. They get tons of fish to eat. They're bred for this purpose. Like, it's, it's, it's not awful you know what i mean that could be considered if you're talking about PETA, that could probably be considered cormorant slave labor you know what i mean sure. so well that, there's varying levels of this you. stuff yeah that's what i was going to ask you so let's things. say i've spent a, you know a bunch of time in greenland where everyone in the winter you get around with sl sled dogs right yeah so people who hunt or do whatever most people have a, a pack of sled dogs uh they're called greenland dogs they're like a wolf mm -hmm. hybrid um, they're working dogs. Those dogs spend most of their time chained up outside, right? right? So they're on chains. They live outdoors. They don't have dog houses. Um, and they're chained up at a distance so they can't attack each other, whatever. Right. Do you think working dogs who spend their life chained up, is that the same as these monkeys? Or is it different I've only because the monkeys are primates and they're more intelligent? I mean, and again, like I said, there's levels, right? Yeah, I'm sure that, the, I, and from my experience in Thailand, those monkeys are probably treated terribly and they are abused, right? From your experience in Greenland, those dogs are loved, even though they're not indoor dogs, I'm assuming, right? Because I've seen sled dogs as well. They're loved, for they're the not most, indoor for dogs. For the most part. Yeah. If, now, if they have too many, too much of a litter, they drown them in bathtubs, which is oof, horrific. But that's aside rough. from yeah. that, yeah. Well, let me, so let me, let me answer your question with another question. Have you ever been to, and I've experienced this most, most with this, this breed. Have you ever been to a friend's house and they've got a Australian Shepherd or a Border Collie and that dog is just fucking nuts and it's just driving yes. you nuts, especially with Australian Shepherd. It's like nipping, it's running around in circles. It's going, you know, wee, 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 whatever. It's just driving you like bananas. And the family yeah. is like, I, I hate, I hate Ruffles over there. He's like the worst dog ever. That's because Ruffles is a working dog who has been genetically designed to do work, and he lives in a West Hollywood apartment hating his <laughs> fucking life. And he's got right. so much pent-up energy and anxiety and no outlet for it because he's a working dog who someone goes, that's a pretty dog, I want one, because yeah. they bought the yeah. wrong breed of dog for their lifestyle. Now, I'm not saying that's the same thing as these monkeys, I'm not saying it's the same thing as the cormorants, but there are animals genetically designed or predisposed to working, and if they don't get to work, they will be a mess. Now, not all of them, there's variants, just like the, there's variations, just like there are in people and personalities, but some of these animals love to do these things. By the way, monkeys love to pick coconuts. I'm not saying they want to do it 14 hours a day with a chain around their neck, but right. monkeys love to pick coconuts, they just do. Um, so, you know, that, so it's like, there's varying levels and my problem with this story, and I haven't read the report or anything, is that sure. it came out from PETA. And PETA, uh, and we'll get into a, we can get into a whole thing on no, that. No, let's get into it. Just go. Get into the rant, man. That's, that's called a segue in the biz. <laughs> uh, it is. That's true. PETA is nuts. You know, I've said this before. And I've actually worked with PETA. And on an individual level, some of them are great. You know, some of the people that work there are awesome people. But on an on a, on a organization level they can be like a terrorist organization. I mean, they can be absolutely nuts. And the thing that comes to mind, this thing that I saw just last week, is PETA is calling on humans to denounce animal insults, insults like chicken or pig. So in other words, if I go, ah, oh, Peter, you're such a chicken, you know, you're scared of doing that, or, or, or you know, Patrick, you're such a rat, man, like, uh, you eat like a pig. <laughs> PETA is saying that that is, and this is one of my new favorite terms with the whole second story, speciest. And it's just, it's a yeah. terrible thing and that we have to do away with it. 
Like it's going to hurt the chicken or pig or snake or rat's feelings. No, this is like like they like they know that you're calling. Like if I go, oh, Ritep, you're such a chicken. You won't you won't jump or you know you won't chug that beer can or you, whatever. Can you start like there's a to chicken that's going to overhear that in the restaurant and be like, oh, that's, that's unbelievable. Did you hear what that guy called him? That's absurd. You know, it's just it's absurd, it's, dude. It's, it's I would, mental. I would have to think that the point they're attempting to make, which I agree with you, this is preposterous beyond belief, is that. If, you know, a bunch of kids hear you being like, look at it, look at the way you eat, you pig, that like, what, by the time that kid grows up, they're going to walk by a pig and be like, ugh, pig, and kick the pig, right? That's got to be their point. If the point is that the pig's going to hear it and be like, <clears throat> and be sad, yeah. <laughs> then they're mental. No. They're mental either way. Pig, they're That's mental pig either is, way. I, yeah. I take personal offense to this. Pig is... is I've been calling everybody I know a pig for two decades. I have a shirt You're, that says pig trash. Are you currently wearing a t-shirt that says pig trash? No, but I wore it when we recorded the dailies <laughs> that will be coming out yeah. this week. Um, pig, I, I will fight this. Uh, I will storm the Capitol with the guns I don't have to fight PETA <laughs> on this one because... I, they don't work at the Capitol, but sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I'm at the Capitol of I'd PETA. Like I like Patrick's point, right, which is not to, like, villainize these certain animals and their qualities. At the same time, I own two pigs, okay? I don't know anyone at PETA that owns pigs. I own 35 chickens. Um, you know, I have two pigs right there. Right behind my office wall lives two pigs. Two pigs right here I you're talking to, I dare you too. to go and feed them, okay, and tell me how graceful and, and beautiful it is. <laughs> I mean, they're disgusting. <laughs> like, they, they don't eat nicely. So, well, you know, to be like, you eat point. like a pig, yeah. That's the whole point but of here's the other. That guy, listen, it's like, thing too, yeah. it's like you're fucking, you're, you're calling somebody, okay, so what's next? You can't call somebody stupid when they're acting like a dick or when they're being dumb? You can't call somebody an well, asshole? Don't being, call them a dick. You can't that, call them an that, asshole that, because we're fucking or, assholeist? Or, I mean, that's, that's my body part. That's the bigger point is like, can we, can anyone have fun? Period. <laughs> no. Are, no. Are, are, have we entered the cycle in whatever's happening in society to where literally you better not have fucking fun. <laughs> if you laugh, if you smile, if a, if a dad and a, his son want to joke around on the couch while watching a game or a movie together, you know, can they do that? Can anyone smile? I don't, I, no, I, you know no, what I mean? Fun is not allowed fun. anymore. My friend told and me like, to stop smiling when he sent me that message because he said I looked <laughs> like did. a douche, so... <laughs> he did. Um, it's dumb. So, well, wait, do you like PETA in general, Forrest? I mean, do they do good work? Like, what? Yeah, I don't do know much some, about PETA. No, I have some. I, I, I like. I like. Measuring. I like PETA. I like PETA. I, I know I hesitated. Yeah. I had to think about it because sure. wh what they stand for is a very good thing, right? The acronym PETA means People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals. Like, shit, I'll get that tattooed on my chest. You know what I mean? Like, I'm for it. But the way that they have conducted their business, some of the, the things like this, like this denouncing the word, it's like it's so extreme and overboard. And it's not yes. like, OK, if we push to this extreme, then maybe it'll land back here. And that's their justification. You know what I mean? It's right. like they're, they're, they're for this, like this term specious. And I have a funny story about that. I'll tell in a second. This is like a thing that they're promoting. Right yeah. now. Let me get into that for a second, right? The speciest is like being racist against species, valuing one more than the other. That's what speciest means, right? My funny story is this. I Every now and then I check my, my Instagram message request, right? Because if you don't follow someone, it goes into like a request folder when they send you a message. I get hundreds, you know, th thousands Ooh, sometimes of shot. message requests. A lister. No, shut up. I'm telling you a story. So I don't check them every day because it would take up too much time. So I check them like once every couple of weeks. And, you know, there's there's this massive queue and usually I read through like half of them and then hit delete all because it's just too many. Well, this one day, not too long ago, maybe three weeks ago, I'm, I'm looking at my message requests and I see that there's some woman, I can't remember her name, and I open her message and there's like 40 messages from her, right? And I, at a first glance, I'm like, oh, cool, whatever, like a, a super fan or something. And she is just ranting about what an awful human being I am, how I'm a specious because I eat meat, how I don't, you know, what a liar I am for calling myself a wildlife biologist and a conservationist because I don't value the lives of fish and chicken and, and cow and like, I mean, it's just gnarly. So obviously that was a hard delete. But uh, this term specious is what's driving me nuts. And I'll, I'll explain it in the most simple terms I can, right? I'll give Go. you an analogy. Do it. Yeah, okay? what do you got? There's 400 uh, snow leopards left in the world, 400 of them, 
They're a top of the food chain. Not not all snow leopards. I'm thinking of uh, uh, specific subspecies. But um, anyway, there's 400 of them left, right? Mm -hmm. 400, that's it. They're at the top of the food chain. They're an apex predator, which, as we've talked about, has that cascade effect. It's like the wolves in Yellowstone. When you remove them, it destroys the whole ecosystem, right? There's how many billions of, say, ar invasive Argentine ants in North America? I mean, billions, right? If you guys go... Look in your cupboards right now, you'll find a thousand of them, right? They're, they're the ants that run around everywhere. They're an invasive Argentine ant. Huh. Now, if you yeah, look at the 400, if you, if, you go, if you go and you collect a snow leopard and you collect an Argentine ant and you kill both of those, you tell me that they have the same value, right. scientifically speaking. You tell me that killing that, that ant and killing that snow leopard, of which we are desperately in need of, genetically speaking, or killing that ant, which we should be killing because it's an invasive species, and there's gazillions of them, have the same weight. Even if you take the no, invasive species no out of the say equation. That, well, would anyone say that? <clears throat> yes, well, that's being species. It, it's valuing the life of one animal more than the life of another. That is the definition of being species. Well, he's illustrating so this whole what species this term, said. It goes against science. That's what I, that's what pisses me off. The species yeah, thing goes against science. Science is like, oh, snow leopards, super valuable, small genetic pool, top of the food chain, keep them around, ant, sardine, whatever, bottom of the food chain, not important if one dies. But that's speciest because the term species means one all life is is e of equal value in the animal kingdom, which it's scientifically not. Well, let me get, let me go back to <laughs> no. something. Just back to PETA in general. And you said you, you you brought up the point that you know some of the shit they do is ter terroristic, and uh, I mean any organization that's around long enough, I feel like starts to become somewhat or that dramatically extreme in that regard because i mean especially in today's society because look at how polarizing everything is even the the species thing you're talking about this this woman is sending you 40 messages basically telling you you should kill yourself because <laughs> yeah. of some like what would otherwise be if if social media and the world wasn't in the way that it, the shape that it was right now with all the polarization of everything wouldn't be a non-issue like she would never even think about this she right. would never contact you so it's like there's always these good aspects to everything like look at even religion for example at at a certain point catholicism i mean it, it was it's it is still used when somebody dies you know they they tell stories about how you're going to see them again it comforts people there's yep. there's all these yep. things but you know it's like human nature pushes us to be to polarize these big ideologies because you i don't know what it is man maybe it's because you get so much hate in one way pushing you in the other and then you get bitter and all of a sudden you're like a power maniac and you're like at the top of this organization and you well, got this big chip on your shoulder and you're fucking yeah. a terrorist organization now. I mean, I was just talking to uh, a friend of mine yesterday about some political bullshit and, uh, you know, he made a good point, which was like, if I think I don't have many friends that have strong political ideologies or really any strong ideologies. Most Almost everybody I know personally that I'm friends with and know a lot about them just is pretty much like, yeah, do whatever you want. You know, I don't really yeah. care that much. You know, like pretty most neutral. people I know don't have a strong thing that must, everything must fit within that. And that's what you do. And I right. think in general, like probably the more miserable you are just being a human being wearing your own skin and waking up every day and needing a purpose. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the more you're going to go extreme in a direction because that gives you purpose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's, it's not yeah. easy. The human condition is a way of explaining the fact that we're quite possibly the only animal on earth that's hyper aware of from the time that we're two years old, that we have a finite period to live and that the right. second half of that period will be a steady decline into shitting ourselves in a hospital. That's great. Bed, right? <laughs> so so that's, that's, part of, <laughs> that's part of being a human and it can be hard and it weighs on people. Something you want to tell and us, think, Pat? You okay? No, I mean, I, I don't. I think making a good point. No, you absolutely. Know, I think it's 100%. just like if, if just the day to day of waking up and dealing with, with life is difficult, you may become more radical and more extreme in your beliefs as time goes on, regardless of what your cause is, whether it's protecting animals or wanting to kill Donald Trump or wanting to storm the Capitol <laughs> or whatever the fuck it right. is, you know? Yeah. And I think there's something about like the, the, 
the minority groups or like the extreme minorities, right? Where they're so extreme on one political scale or another or one, you know, a cause like PETA's or whatever it is that are the loudest too, right? It's like, my thing is so outrageous that I'm going to bang the drum the loudest so that everybody hears it as opposed to like all of us on this call. And, and, you know, like you said, Patrick, everybody that you know, who's all like, yeah, just be you, you know, like, that's how (laughs) I feel. It's like, I don't care who you marry or or what your social views are or your ethnicity. Like, I don't care about any of that. Like, I'll like you for you or dislike you for you. Like, you know, but that's just, that's the majority of, I I think that's how the majority of people feel. But those people that have super strong opinions about those things are just going to scream and shout about it. Well, one of the, and and right now is a time where if you're in the, the group where it's like, I just don't want thought policing. I don't care what you think. I don't care what you do. It's just easier to stay quiet because why it would is. you go out and be like, he has the right to be offensive. It's like, just shut up. I mean, I, yeah, the, the, the five, 10 percent that are angry or offended by everything are the ones who are doing it on social media and everyone else kind right. of has to agree or risk getting canceled, essentially. Right. And yeah. if you're and if you speak up against that extremist, you get labeled as something, too. If that well, you're done. You've you got to be careful. You've got to tip her. You got to tiptoe right. around everything. And I mean, I think a lot of it has to do too just uh, with like ostr- being ostracized because, and like with the pandemic and shit, and people are fucking like secluded, like they're inside. All they have is the internet and they're, and people are just getting insane. Yeah. Uh, uh, to illustrate, today I was at the park and these two fucking idiot mothers came with their children, <laughs> all six of them, and they went and started playing pickleball or whatever, something with a racket. Like, 30 yards away and just let their fucking kids run around this giant park and the kids are all fucking like, oh, hey, I'm going to go stand by me. Me. I'm fucking laying there. I'm like trying to work in the park and I like, what am I going to do? I just got up and left, but I was so fucking furious. I was like, these fucking dumb bitches, they're everything I hate in the world. Jesus. <laughs> in my head. Wait, so, until I left. so what were they doing? They were breathing. The kids were maskless and breathing on you? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, of course, in my head, it was exaggerated. I, I was like, they were still they were like like six feet, but then they kept like coming closer and closer. But of course, in today's society now, I'm like, ugh, like I gotta, <laughs> gotta get the hell out of here. But then of course, yeah. I'm also now hating these two moms who are like 26 <laughs> who I've never met. But I'm just like, I'm just yeah, like, wait I till can't. you have a kid. Yeah, so I'm just like, Dude, yeah. wait till you have a kid. I mean, I don't have a kid, but like, <laughs> just a top God, man. I can only imagine that you're five, six years in. It sounds like they had three each or whatever. Yeah, I'm sure they're just like, I don't care what that <laughs> fucking totally. loser and the Asukar hat thinks about us, I need a fucking break. Yeah, it's like if my kid wants to run to the other side of the park, great. If he's not screaming in my face for five minutes, that'll be amazing. I don't care who else is hating it. Run up to a white van and disappear, and then I'll only have two, which was always the plan. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Uh, I I want to go back to something that we were talking about. You know, I got got derailed there and started ranting on you know, terrorism and extremism and all kinds of isms. But <laughs> um, why people listen, man. They want to hear you rant for us. That's true. Well, I'm good at it. Well, I'm going to I'm going to bring up something else that was in the news. That's pretty fun. And it, it, it I, I was reminded of it when we were talking about monkey slave labor. Um, there is a temple where uh, research has actually shown that wild macaques that come into this temple have learned to steal from humans. Now, that's not new. Like, I've had stuff stolen from me, and I, I can tell you guys about that in a little bit for, by monkeys at a temple. Well, that's like but that famous YouTube okay. video where they, they basically, like, storm that the, this, like, tourist area and starts drinking all the, the booze, right? Those are macaques, right? You guys seen that video um, where they like come into the tourist oh, yeah, yeah. and they start they drinking are, all the are. rum and get hammered and eat the food and then they just leave. They just steal all the booze. I haven't I haven't seen that video, it's but I'll popular. tell you my story in a minute. It was a whole racket. I got I got like I got done in. Yeah. Like I got I got stood up. I had to pay money, all kinds of things. But anyway, the the interesting part about this piece of news is that these macaques have actually learned to identify uh, the high value items. So instead oh, wow. of stealing a shoe they'll st- or a hat, they'll steal your iPhone now and then hold it for ransom until you give them something Goddamn. because they know if they steal your hat or, you know, whatever, a, a, a wrapper yes, or something yeah. out the corner, you're just like, yeah, I don't care. It's just my hat. <laughs> yeah, but when they right. steal your iPhone, you're like, oh, shit, my iPhone, my iPhone, you oh, know, yeah. here, monkey, here, monkey, <laughs> which is, 
you know, like we're talking about the slave labor, we're talking about their intelligence level and all that. That's pretty bonkers. Oh, yeah. Like it's Look one thing that. for a monkey to just grab and run. It's another thing for him to pickpocket your most high value items and then hold them for ransom. It's it's pretty nuts. If you're just uh, listening to the audio, head over to the YouTube. Producer Will has pulled up an actual picture of a macaque holding somebody's <laughs> cell phone. Looks like it's looks like it's trying to fucking break that iPhone in half. This is <laughs> so this temple this temple is in Bali, which is obviously a very heavily touristed area. So yep. no shortage of iPhones and fucking passport holders, and you'll pay good fucking money for that shit. Oh, so let yeah. me tell my story yeah. about yeah, what happened. If, this, if it's this I actually exact don't know temple. this story. You do, okay. you do or don't? I don't know this, no. No, yeah. So when I was in Bali with my girlfriend, uh, by the way, if, if any Brosner's never been to Bali, if you're really looking to impress somebody, and I mean really looking to impress them, take them to Bali because... I'm not a very romantic guy. I'm a wildlife scientist. I'm usually dirty. I'm very rarely shaven cleanly. Like, I, like I'm, I'm a mess. And Bali is the most gorgeous romantic place ever, period. Like, if really? you want just pure... Oh, my God, dude. Oh, shit. There's okay. nowhere else that yeah, anybody man. should ever go for a honeymoon, period. Affordable, like, it's just, too. It's so romantic. Everything smells beautiful. The resorts are incredible. It's cheap as dirt. Like, everything is made for romance in Bali. Like, you can't get into a bathtub without floating candles and petals on it anywhere in the country. Like, I think there's a law. Um, it's just okay. insane. Uh, anyway, Dope. I was in Bali with my girlfriend, and um, we, we went to one of these temples. In fact, we went, I believe we went to the monkey temple in Ubud, but I can't remember if it was that one or a different one. And sure enough, we're walking through the temple, and there's this, like, sweet old lady, this old Balinese lady, and she's like, you know, she's got her macaques around and she's giving them a little banana here and, you know, a little, little, you know, nothing, nothing terrible, you know, just like, oh, cool. Look at the macaques and look at the sweet old little lady. Right. And you keep, you keep walking on the tour. And, uh, five minutes later, you know, I, I think it was Jess. So my girlfriend like screams and was like, ah, this, this monkey stole my, I think it was her, her phone. I can't really remember anymore, but it grabbed something from her. Right. And we were like, you know, I'm like, ah, let me handle this. I'm the animal guy. And I'm like, come here, monkey, come here, monkey. You know, like, I'm like trying all this stuff and grabbing food and trying all these things. And the monkey's just sitting, you know, 30 feet up in a tree looking at me like, fuck you, buddy. Um, like zero interest. <laughs> yeah, it's well, like I could sudden, fuck with it. I could fuck 10 of you, bro. <laughs> fuck yeah, off. Oh, it, it, fuck dude, it was flexing playing. on me so hard. So all of a sudden, <laughs> yeah. this sweet little old Balinese lady walks up to me and she's like in in pretty perfect English. She's like, oh, that, that monkey, he, it looks like he's stolen something from you. And I'm like, yeah. She's like, oh, well, these are great monkeys. You know, I know that monkey. Um, he's just, he's got this thing where like, you have to give him a candy bar if you want to get your, your phone back. And I'm like, a candy bar? That's really unhealthy. And she's like, yeah. You know, and they're really specific. Like they only like, I don't remember what it was, but let's say Snickers bars. Right. And I'm like, what? Shut up. You know, and I was re I wouldn't Slapped say her. shut up. I was very polite. I was like, oh, OK, well, you know, like I'm it, like, listen, you know, in my head, I'm thinking like, listen, lady, like I, 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 I work with animals for a living. Like, why don't you take a yeah. seat and watch how it's done? That's what I'm thinking in my head. <laughs> well, after 30 more minutes of me like dancing, throwing my hat at the monkey, like throwing bananas in the tree, everything you can name. And this monkey's sitting there looking at me with its eyes rolled back out of boredom. I turned to the woman and I'm like, OK, you know, um, like uh, we've now been here an hour and 20 minutes trying to get the cell phone back. And I'm like, you know, do you know where I can get one of these these Balinese candy bars, the Snickers, so to speak? And she's like, yeah, they're really hard to find, you know, and the monkey really only likes them. I have one. And I was like, great. Oh, you know, can I, can I grab that from you? Yeah. You know where the story's okay. going. And, I'm, and she's okay. like, yeah, no problem. That's you know, when you should have slapped her right in the fucking face. I, 20 I should have. It was bucks? something like it was something outrageous. That's and a I'm year's like, salary me? for her. No, straight up, dude. And she's like, twenty bucks. And I'm like, e excuse me. She's like, yeah, that's that's how much I sell them for. They're twenty bucks. And I'm like, okay, like I'll definitely find these somewhere else. Um, and you know, and then I've got my girlfriend who's like, come on, I need to get the I need to get the phone. I'm like, fuck. All right, fine. Here's your twenty bucks. The lady literally reaches into her pocket. She hasn't even pulled the, the whatever oh Snickers bar out of her. God. Monkey's standing in front of her, hands hands the phone to Jessica. Doesn't even, like, kind of do it. Hands it to her, grabs the Snickers bar, and off, and off goes the monkey. And the woman's like, oh, I'm so sorry this happened. You know, like, good luck next time, blah, blah, blah. And I walk away, and I'm like, I think I just got done. Uh, you know, like, yeah. but it was still, the way it played out, it didn't feel like it. Well, sure enough, we lap around the temple. We're about to head out, and I'm like, just give me a second, would you? And Jess is like, sure. 
And I just trot the like 150 yards over to where the whole thing happened. Sure enough, there stands an unsuspecting white couple. Monkey's in the tree with the iPhone. <laughs> Lady is going, you know, he loves this candy bar. He just loves this oh, kind God. of... The whole thing's a fucking racket. By the dude. way, this, uh, this is I'm fucking... I'm proud of that lady. Me too. I was going to say, this is fucking yeah. genius. At first I said, you should slap this bitch in the face. But, <laughs> but uh, this... She has earned that fucking money. They have trained True. that monkey, and this is brilliant. True. And by the way, you paid 20 bucks. Basically, <laughs> I would look at it as a show. You got a show. <laughs> But you're like an animal yeah. guy, so it doesn't yeah. matter. But There's like any normal, unsuspecting couple who are not into animals, like I would look back on that and be like, "That's a pretty good fucking story," and I'm entertained. It's a, it's a racket, dude. It's a good and it's a good <laughs> racket. And you know, the monkey's fat and happy. She makes probably a pretty decent living. <laughs> like, I'm curious what happens if you're the guy who's like, "I'm not paying that." Have you ever? You know, looked I don't up, know if there is anyone. Have you ever but, looked up how much those uh, candy bars cost at like a shop? Like twelve no, cents, dude. Some some <laughs> Balinese candy. I don't, I don't fucking you know. So, like so I was just did, flustered. Did she give the candy to the monkey? Oh yeah, straight up handed oh, it to the monkey. Yeah, got her. The, the monkey, monkey wouldn't it. fucking follow the rules on the next scam, yeah. dude. dude. So really, got the, the only whole thing worked out. The only thing that I don't like about the story is that the monkey's mostly subsiding on Snickers. But yeah. aside from <laughs> that, I mean, the monkey's got a good deal going. The lady's thrilled. You know. And I'm pretty sure, because she had, I told you, when I walked in, there were like half a dozen macaques around her. So she's got, she's got a troop. She's of, got a harem. She, of, the theme, of the thieving monkey. I mean, she is like, was it Oliver Twist, where they're all running around pickpocketing everybody and they bring yeah. it back? She, she's got yeah, her I'd, Oliver twi I'd Twist a, gang of macaques there. I'd oh, God. Excuse me. I'd watch a documentary on this lady. Netflix, go did. find her. I know. Gross. Dude, uh, I can't take you seriously hey, with that top knot. Please, never again. Okay, okay, top knot boy. Uh, I, I, That's I, right. I got an Me, idea. Top I got an boy. idea not for you. a new game. Not you. Sorry. Jeez. Sounds, you sound like okay. George Costanza over there. Okay. All right, I want to try a new game here. So we've Ooh. we've all been researching uh, for a project. We've been researching some interesting animal behaviors. Uh, and I have been compiling this document on my side. And I found some things that have blown my mind. So what I'm going to do, uh, legit things that make me think we're living in a simulation or a video game or someone else's <laughs> imagination, because this shit is so weird. Like when you do Bizarre Animal of the Week, it always blows my mind. But some of this stuff is like beyond comprehension crazy. OK, mm. so I'm going to okay. name a power or an ability that an animal has. I'm going to tell you a couple sentences about it. Then you're going to guess. And I want all the Brosners to play along. Uh, okay, I see. you're going to guess what the animal is. You guys are going to guess, yeah. Got it, I, okay. I got it. Yeah, I get the All game. Right. That's fun, All I right. like that. All right, so this is an animal that really exists. When attacked or threatened, it releases about the equivalent of a teaspoon of this chemical that it produces inside its body, through its skin, okay? About a teaspoon worth. So you can picture a teaspoon, not very big. Okay. Mm -hmm. When that teaspoon combines with water, which it lives in, that one teaspoon turns into about 13 gallons of the stickiest slime you can imagine. <laughs> Will is going to pull up a picture. Okay. But of, wait, Ritep has to guess what it is first. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't, 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 yeah, don't show it because I think there are a couple of the animals are in the thing. <clears throat> so there's the stickiest slime. This is, think about this, how small the animal is to produce 13 gallons of slime in one release. It would be the equivalent of if it was the size of an elephant, right? With one single release, it could cover 13 football fields from end zone to end zone in the stickiest shit in the world. That's like that scene in Scary Movie where he hasn't had sex for a hot second and then she's glued to the ceiling. You know that scene? <laughs> it's very <laughs> much like that. That's what it's came to my mind when thing. you were talking about a release. Um, <laughs> a single release. Yeah. All right, so what animal is this, Ritep? What do you think? This is... <clears throat> God. So confident how, the way how he says it. How big was it again? <laughs> it releases a I'm teaspoon? I'm not going to tell you. Oh, it, it but it releases a how, teaspoon how much, through its skin. One teaspoon through the skin? How many Which animals turns can you name, Ritep, gallons. that release, release things through their skin is a better question. I can name zero, and that's why I will go <laughs> against everything that PETA has taught me and say that this is some type of miniature seafaring pig. 
That's all mm. I've got. That's I like a that great guess. guess. That's a good. Do you know guess. what it yeah. is for us? I do. Yeah, it's a hagfish, slimy eel, okay. as they call them in the trade, right? Yeah, it's a hagfish. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look at that stuff. That, that is close. the slime. Yeah, that was close. Come on, that's. That have looks you ever like a touched pig. that slime? I have, yeah. So Santa Barbara, where I live here, is actually a pretty big commercial port for it. And they put these cage traps down deep, like 600 feet deep, with like really gross, dead, rotting crap in there. And the hagfish, which they're deep sea cleanup, right? You might have seen them on planet Earth where they come in and they strip down a whale oh, carcass yeah. in no time. That's hagfish. Um, so they come in and get caught in these traps and the, the fishermen pull them up. And then they literally like milk the slime by like handling these fish. And then the slime goes in a bucket and the, the eel goes overboard. And I know this because I've got a bunch of friends who are commercial fishermen here in Santa Barbara. And one day I was down at the docks and, uh, and they were coming in and my buddy Royce had them in, on, his, on his boat. And I was like, hey, can I, like, I've never actually seen the, the slime eel slime. Do you mind if I like see it? And he's like, don't touch it. And I'm like, ah, I got to touch it. So yeah. I, just, <laughs> yeah. I stuck my hand in this vat of the slime and it was, I mean, I couldn't drive home. It was that bad. <laughs> like I just, I, it was just, there was nothing I could do in the water, in the with soap, in the bathroom at the at the marina to get it off my hand. Like nothing. It took wow. days to get rid of it, and that we'll was before pull, it was mixed with water. We'll pull up the picture of the car. Um, so there was actually an incident in, I believe, California, where a uh, a truck, a commercial truck that was carrying hagfish, live hagfish. Whoa, oh my God! Fell, was involved in a car accident. <clears throat> if you blow that, don't blow it up, Will. But if you blow that picture up, you can see a bunch of hagfish on the ground. All of the hagfish slimed simultaneously. Yeah, and cars sure. like they couldn't move the fucking cars. I'm sure, dude. It's like so. Super and, and, and I don't think I don't think you've said this, Patrick. So that people can learn something out of this. This isn't just like they're trying to eat the fish, and this is a byproduct. They're actually harvesting these fish for the slime. So this slime gets used in toothpaste. It gets used oh, in, great. I think, sexual lubricant, but oh, some fantastic. kind of lubricant for sure. Mm -hmm. um, a bunch of other things. And I think they're coming up with more and more uses for it because it's an extremely sustainable thing to harvest because there's gazillions of these fish. They breed very readily. They're at the bottom of the food chain. They're, they're um, you know, scavengers. They're, they just eat dead things. And they produce this ridiculous amounts of this this liquid that is much more sustainable than like you know a petroleum based product so it's actually the whole thing's really cool i think yeah it's a unique they said that what makes what creates the slime the thing they release that combines with water the actual slime itself is 99.8 percent water and only 0.2 percent of this little bit of protein that they release from their their body and it's a unique protein in nature they've never found this protein sequence anywhere else Oh, pretty wow. fucking cool, man. Oh, it's dude, that is cool. I, for one... Do you know, I, in your reading, Patrick, do you know if that's something they can synthesize, like they've been able to replicate it? I'm guessing not, or they I, wouldn't still be I, fishing I, them. I but. gathered no, because they are, you, they're doing these hagfish farms. Yeah. Um, so, but Probably I just know. easier and cheaper, I mean, to fucking do it that way right now. But, dude, I, yeah. I'm happy to know about another... Um, another thing that animals produce that is like the spider web which is in insanely fucking strong for... It's like the strongest fucking material on Earth or whatever. And um, I, I have another now, a Battle Royale uh, thing that I can use for the future. Oh, oh yeah. you're saying you're going to use the, the, the slime meal, the hagfish. I mean, I can use oh, yeah. hagfish and, and you know, it, spider it. web. I'm talking about. Right. I like that. Here's Please. another one. Let's just do three of these for now and see if people yeah, like this it's, segment. It's fun. I, this is a fun fucking segment because this shit blows hey, my you mind. You learn a lot. I All love right. it. I'm learning a I lot. Okay. So, this animal, it's in the animal kingdom. Uh, Hold on, let me Google when that. When threatened, okay, animal when kingdom. When threatened, mm -hmm. it will, so they live in a group, a herd. I'm not going to tell you, you know, they live in a group, a colony okay. of some sort. When threatened, they have a hierarchy, right? Okay. And so there are ones that are at the bottom of the hierarchy. They will become suicide bombers. And when I say bombers, here's what I mean the animal will start vibrating the muscles in its abdomen. It will then explode itself, which creates a toxic yellow liquid that can kill, poison and kill whatever's attacking the group, right? So the lower ones on the hierarchy will start attacking the predator. They'll okay. bite onto it. They'll bite onto it and then they'll vibrate their abs 
explode their bodies and they have this toxic yellow liquid inside that will get on the predator and can poison and kill the predator. But here's what's worse. The jaws clamp down and will never unclamp. Mm. So you can see animals that have been attacked by this that have a bunch of heads stuck to their bodies and they're covered in this yellow goo. That's wild. <laughs> Um, what do you think, Ratep? What do you think that is? This has to be like, another kind of pig. No, no. <laughs> there's no way that this is like a mammal. This has to be like an insect because there's goo and chemicals. And I just feel like bees release chemicals to, so that they all sting at the same time. So I'm just thinking insect. And I know that ants are like they. I've I've watched a video on ants that basically somehow communicate and have all of the other ants of that species attack. A nest. I'm gonna go the uh, pangolin ant. Some kind of ant. <laughs> <laughs> Very okay. good. Very good. good guess. For us, yeah. So I, guess. I'm, I, that's great deduction by old sea pig over there. <laughs> um, hey man, Pete is gonna uh, be on no, our I, ass. No, I agree. I, is it by chance a Zulu ant? Uh. I don't, it might be called that. I'm referring, what I saw was it's called the Malaysian exploding ant. Okay, no, it's definitely not then. Um, oh, and, it's an ant? And I, I want to hear more about yeah. the Malaysian oh, exploding shit. ant, but. Oh my God, yeah, look, look at, at this that. picture Will brought up here. Yeah, that's neat. Dude, that's, that looks like a fucking birthday cake or something. <laughs> it looks delicious. <laughs> uh, the exploding yellow chemical. So. Where, where I grew up, we have ants that, same thing that they, they in Zimbabwe, they called the Zulu ant, where they would bite on and their heads would get left behind. And the Zulu ant gets so big that um, the Zulus, where they get their name from, which is a tribe of people, would use them for stitches. So if they got cut oh, wow. badly, they'd wow. go out and collect Zulu ants and they, they'd very, you know, they'd hold the flap of skin together and they'd very carefully use the ant to snip the skin together and then they'd pinch off the body and the head would stay behind for a week before falling off and you'd have perfect stitches. And I actually did it to myself once as a kid. I don't know if you can see it on the podcast. Yeah, maybe. I'll show you guys. Uh, I don't know if you can see that scar on my knee or not. You can kind not, of see it in the light. Oh, yeah, 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 a little bit. A little bit yeah. in the light. It's tiny. Yeah. But uh, I, I got a cut, and I was with a bunch of, of the guys that worked on our farm, and I was like, I want to try the Zulu ant thing, and we did it, and it festered and got super infected and didn't <laughs> work at all. <laughs> um, Real good. But, uh, yeah, that's why I guess the Zulu ant, because of the head thing. That was, like, the only giveaway for me that it was definitely an ant. But this this is way cooler that it freaking explodes. Dude, I yeah, am it fucking, has... not to toot my own horn, my, uh, but, yeah, good but job, I'm Rick, fucking, yeah. I'm thrilled with myself right now. No, dude, your deduction was fantastic. You Look how uh, much you've learned in 44 weeks. Isn't it amazing? I to be know. honest, I've always been this smart, so fuck off. It has nothing to I just think Come on. to think about these adaptations <laughs> that these that these animals have, have created is so mind-blowing because I like to think in terms of the uh, if humans could do it. Uh, oh, yeah. All right, so here's here's another one, last one. Okay. Great. Love this Everyone, game, by the way. Yeah, yeah it's, it's fun. fun. All right, so this is a real fucking superpower here, man. This This one freaks me out. Because I don't, I don't believe, I can't believe this. Okay. So this animal has a real good defense against predators, right? So it's, it's getting nervous. It feels like you're coming up on it. You're stepping in on its lady or its man. <laughs> and here's what it's going to do. It's going to rocket a chemical, a very caustic chemical out of its butt. <laughs> but here's the thing. It's not just that it's a caustic chemical that's coming out of the butt. It's that the chemical, this liquid that it's shooting, is 211.5 degrees Fahrenheit. It's half a degree colder than boiling water. That's how hot it is. That shoots out of its butt. Okay? So that means it's storing this boiling chemical liquid inside its body. And the way that it creates this is somehow has a mechanism inside its gut that allows it to create a series of combined chemicals to create a series of explosions inside of this specialized gut organ. 500 chemical explosions per second, and it just does it by combining little particles, and the explosions superheat the liquid, hmm. and boom, it blasts it out. At the, at the temperature of boiling water, and the chemical is caustic and can fuck you up. Hmm. What are we? What kind of animal are we thinking about here? What do you think? Well, 
Wow, this is hard. Um, <laughs> because it involves <laughs> boiling liquid, I- I'm going to say that it's something that's in water. So uh, I'm going to go with some type of... Uh, I mean, I, I don't think that this could be like a fish or something, or I would have seen a BuzzFeed article on it. It's got to be some type of water <laughs> insect. Uh, All right. Like a water... Give it a name. Uh, if you get this right, I'll, go, I'll come over there and... I'm going to go with the Great Caribbean you. Water Beetle. Nice. Nice. I like your Forest. naming. It's a Bombardier Beetle, Trebek. It is. You, know it? you got it yeah. again. It's a beetle. Oh, God, but he dude, you got it again. again. Yeah. No, but Look th- th- at that. this is well known because of its defense. Oh my in the God, Kingdom. that's bonkers! Yeah, yeah. So we'll pull up a picture. Crazy. I so I didn't know. All I knew is that they shot boiling hot acid out of their butt. I didn't know the rest of the information that Patrick just gave us, especially about how they generate the boiling. That's hot the craziest liquid. fact. That's yeah. the craziest part. Exactly. To me. Yeah. That was mind blowing to me. I didn't know that. I mean, I, that's fascinating. The fact that they. They have these series of micro explosions that create a chemical reaction to heat the liquid, and that they well, that's can what store happens that without I it burning through their organs. Yeah, what's that? That's the same. <laughs> well, that's same the chemical reaction. It is, <laughs> and that's the thing that's so cool is that it doesn't need a big lead time. In two seconds, it can heat the liquid that's from zero amazing. to two hundred and twelve degrees almost by uh, by creating five hundred explosions a second inside of its body. God damn it, that is a power I would like to have. I would have never gotten beat up in middle school, high school, or college the way I did. I would have rocketed (laughs) boiling caustic chemicals all over people. (laughs) Man. I like this game. This is a fun one, Patrick. I suggest you prepare prepare, prepare three more for for next week because I think this is good. I think it's a good educational segment. I'm learning a lot, you know. I know you enjoy yeah. researching them, so I'm into it. It's fun. It. Um, if you're listening, by the way, on iTunes, let us know if you like this segment. If you're on the YouTube, let us know if you like the segment. Uh, or just say, I fucking hated it. It's too much of Patrick's voice, and it's annoying, and it's bothering me. But by the way, yeah. now just I... Just say that either way. Now I know <laughs> yeah. why uh, why uh, BTG, previous guest that we had on the podcast, was so into uh, doing doing things with tiny animals, because... Like insects and shit, they do the craziest shit, man. Yeah. I mean, this is wild. Both of these. So, real, real quick, one thing to think about, Ritep, is that you know there's a lot of evolutionary biologists that have looked at where we've been, and there are a number that are looking at evolutionarily speaking where we're going, right? And mm-hmm. there's there's one in particular I'm blanking on his name right now, who's a pretty notable evolutionary biologist, who believes very strongly that the future belongs to insects, right? So we've had our time of the reptiles, which is the, you know, and birds are basically reptiles. We won't get into that whole thing, Mm -hmm. right? And that was the dinosaurs. Now is currently the time of the mammals. Mm -hmm. um, And the future is going to be the time of the insects. And what that means is, you know, when the mammals are losing or gone or whatever, you know, whether we, we Easter Island ourselves and the only thing that survived were cockroaches and they evolved or whatever, once all the mammals and birds and things that eat the insects are more or less gone, except on a micro scale, mm-hmm. that's going to open the world up to things like bombardier beetles that are 14 foot tall. Sure. Right. Like imagine imagine a bombardier elephant, basically, <laughs> because once mammals are out of the way, there's nothing that will regulate uh, the growth of these insects and arachnids and things like that. So, yeah, imagine. You know, we all talk about going back in time and seeing dinosaurs, right? Like, I'd go nuts to do that. But imagine if you could fast forward 200 million years, assuming Earth was still here, humans and all mammal life is gone, and there's just elephant and giraffe and crocodile in the form of insects with all these chemical superpowers. It would be way more terrifying than dinosaurs. Dude, it's it's a scary thought, but it's not going to happen. Because uh, the, I think that it could be, we could be overrun with insects where every square inch of land and water are covered in them, but they'll never get that big because of the way that their, uh, their circulatory system works, right? right. So insects right. store all of their blood in their gut. Right. And that really limits the size because that Correct. gut blood needs to be pumped everywhere else. So Correct. an insect just can't get too big. Otherwise, well, the gut would get too heavy. Dude, but 200 million but, years, they could evolve to fucking come out of that's, that. Probably, and that's the argument. That's that could all point. change, right? Yeah. Like there could be blood circulation. Yeah, exactly. They but, could um, get a better system. Dude, get I mean, you evolved, it's, it's, it's evolved to it's have a terrible top knot after you mimic me and my trademark. 
Well, it, it's not it's not bugs as we know them, right? It's not reptiles right. as we know them. Just like dino- like yeah. snakes and crocodiles sure. are not dinosaurs, right? Yeah. It's not as we know them. And who knows? We don't understand what evolution will do to these animals. But I, Patrick's point is very valid. The insects that we know today no, will never... You'll never have the ants that we know today walking around at 30 foot tall. Yeah, but you happen. might have one of these fucking beetles shooting hot boiling acid out of its ass and it's the size of an elephant. Very possible in 200 million years. It might happen. Yeah, you know, all they have to, the only thing that keeps that from happening is they just have to have some sort of adaptation where a couple freak insects are born that have a slightly different circulatory system. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking about millions and millions, even a billion years, right? (laughs) Earth's Mm -hmm. got Mm -hmm. four billion years left. Shit, you're right. That that is going to happen. God damn it. (laughs) James Cameron's probably making a movie about it right now. All right, guys. Guess what time it is. I know what time. I have no idea. <laughs> no idea. No idea. <laughs> well, I'll tell you. It's time for Battle Royale. That was, that was the weakest. Nice. Well, I'll tell you. It's time for what? Battle Royale. That's what it sounded like what? to me. Weak. It what? better that be a the, powerful Battle that Royale. Was, that was the deepest I've ever heard his voice go. I'll tell cool. you. Cool. Well, I'll just go fuck myself. You guys want to play the game without me? <laughs> no, no, no. Well, no, okay, what do we got? What do we got? Let's go. Uh, all right. So this one came to me through a Brosner. Shout out to Velasquez828. Ooh. And he says, guys, hey, look, it's Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, yeah. It's time to be thinking football. Mm-hmm. It's coming up. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. He said, I'd love to hear you three draft an all animal Super Bowl team, one receiver, one running back, one QB, uh, and a defense. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> love it. So, so, uh, so a running back, a QB, and a defense. No, and a, and receiver, a receiver, bro. Learn oh, how football works, yeah. mate. And a defense. Yeah. Learn the game. So uh, you don't even time. watch sports. Yeah. So, okay. I watch a lot of rugby, man. <laughs> a lot. Um, so, and your defense, obvious, it's not It's not one. You, uh, it's 11. So multiply the so animal by 11. And don't pick 11, 11 of different them. animals. Yeah. Right. You get oh. one animal. 11 of them (laughs) for your D. (laughs) And then you pick your QB, your running back, your receiver. This is in honor of Super Bowl Sunday. The day that when this comes out will have been yesterday. We're recording on Saturday, the day before. (laughs) Uh, A day where everyone will eat many regrettable foods. Yep. Okay. Feel terrible about themselves after. And then be like, oh, tomorrow's not a day off. Yeah. And then be like, wow, Jack and the Cokes. Chiefs won. Why did I watch that? Yeah. Ooh, All right. Yeah. So, Forrest, I love this. Wh- who, which Brosner submitted this? Uh, this was Velasquez828. What a pro. What a pro. That's not the second suggestion. part of his handle. I'm just saying he's this a pro. This is brilliant. All right. Yeah. So, this is a okay. snake draft. Who goes first? You pick Forrest. It's, it's got, first. I, I know no one who is as motivated by football as Papa P. So, you have to start yes. it off. Definitely a oh, snake great. draft. Great. Get it done. Oh, thank God. Because yeah, the, I had it. to take one off the table. Ugh. I have to take my wide receiver off the table. I, I have to do it. Um, it. Better not be what I was thinking. Of course it, it is. Not be. Of course it is. I'm going to take the low-hanging fruit, but don't call me a basic bitch. Just let me have it. Think about it. Don't say it. Wide don't receiver. It. I like a fast receiver that can don't go straight it. down the field, catch the don't bomb. Don't fucking say it. Don't of fucking course, say it. I'm going to take the fastest animal. God dang it. That flies. I'm not taking the one you thought. I'm not taking that. Because my wide receiver is unguardable. Because it's up in the air. I'm taking a peregrine falcon. Interesting. How are you going to defend that when it's flying? I'm I'm definitely going second. The fastest bird in the world, the peregrine falcon. How fast does it fly, Forrest? Uh, 323 miles per hour on a dive, I believe. All right, so okay. <laughs> uh, I win. All right, um, I win the end. I'm, uh, Should we let Retep go yeah, next? Yeah, you have to. So yeah. take both the animal fruit. guys okay. can't be taking. No, no, go, go, go Retep. It's fair. This so I go fair. four times right now, right in a row. Correct. Okay. Yep. yep. Oh, that's how that works. So always the same. Uh, that's that's a good pick, mate. But I don't know what animal you're going to accurately deliver a football to that animal moving at 300 miles an hour with, because you will no longer have the ability to select a gorilla. A gorilla will be my quarterback, and he will be throwing the ball to whichever receiver animal I choose, and I already mm-hmm. have that in mind. But you can't say it right now. No, I won't say it. Just so but you know. I will yeah. say this. You guys 
have absolutely zero chance of making a fucking complete pass because I have taken the only animal other than a human capable of making a fucking accurate pass with a football. So that's it. Okay. Okay. All right. So that's your quarterback. Okay, I've got a receiver. Yeah, that's my cue. He's got a quarterback. Yep. Forrest, you're up for two picks. What are you going sure. with? Sure. Well, I'm going to start with a defense that'll never let your gorilla throw the ball, and it'll, it'll just it'll just snatch your peregrine falcon out of the air before <laughs> it even attempts to get anywhere. It'll just be fl- it'll be nothing. Okay. Um, and this is important because I'm picking a D of eleven bull elephants to get us started. You know, just. Yeah, look, yeah. you've never looked at a lineman and been like, wow, I wish he was a little smaller. You've never thought that ever. So I'm going real simple, biggest animal in the world, you know, <laughs> land mammal, going 11 bull African elephants. It's a wise it's pick. It's not smart. a bad pick. I, 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 I th- we, it is interesting because I'm visualizing these. I'm not visualizing the uh, the offensive line, which would be what was protecting the quarterback. So I'm just imagining right. these bull right. elephants coming straight yeah. at the quarterback. There's nothing. <laughs> yeah, There's nothing. He, he, he done. So, yeah, your gorilla is going to be a pancake. No way, man. Yeah. He's fucking, he's agile as fuck. Um, <laughs> all right. So you got your D. You're kind of a defensive-minded head coach. I like that. I Boring, I old school, but sure. Let's go ahead. What do you hey, got? Hey, okay. D's win, you know. That's... Yeah. Best offense, good defense. Um, so on that note, let's put somebody. Let's put somebody out there. I'm taking that very simple pick that I thought you were going to take. That yeah. I was very unhappy yeah. about. It's obvious. Yep. I want it. It can run. It will run through. It will run around. We all know where I'm going with this. My <sighs> wide receiver, obvious pick, Cheetah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yep. I I was I shocked that Retep went. With the gorilla to go QB, I thought he was going to go cheetah for receiver because it was the obvious second best pick. Yeah, he's building his team around his quarterback the same way most GMs in the NFL do. So I look, this is even right now. We're all doing well. Yeah, yeah. Tep, no, this is this is big. You know, let's see what the Brosners think. If you're listening to this for the first time, this is a segment we do all the time. The only way we know who won is by your votes on our YouTube and uh, and iTunes. So please let us know who won this. And on that note. Ritep, you're up next. Okay. So, obviously, uh, the cheetah was my second pick. Uh, Pat will have, I mean, I don't even know what animal to throw to his uh, peregrine, peregrine falcon. Uh, my, my, my receiver, though, is going to also be a, uh, a flying animal. And it is going to be a pick that I think, did I pick this in my last uh, thing? Uh, A golden eagle, though, because it is also very fast, and it will be able to accurately catch with its giant fucking talons the football that my gorilla accurately throws into the air and easily, easily spike a touchdown right into the All right. right into the end zone, also bypassing yeah. forests, bull elephants, and any other defense that you put against it, unless it yeah. is a flying defense. Once he picked bull elephant, uh, you know, you had to take to the sky. You got to take to the sky. That's a good Gorilla's pick. Just got to get stole that my idea quick. of going bird, but whatever. Oh fuck right, off! So yeah. My quarterback. Stole I know no one's knot. no one's gonna pick my quarterback Asshole. because I my I have the best quarterback, but no one's gonna think of it. Okay. So I've already got my Peregrine Falcons flying 250, 300 miles an hour as my receiver. Uh, I'm going to focus now on my running back because I am a little worried about Forrest's stout defense of bull elephants. Yeah, yeah you, bull you elephants, should be. Bull elephants don't love getting a big horn stuck in their chest. It's That's true. why I'm going to take a black rhinoceros as my running back. Um, that's good. All right. so, you just took mine, by the way. That was my RV. Okay. You guys so are that's, so yeah. fucking And that's cute. off the table now, to be clear. Rhino's gone. Yes. So that's Rhino's well gone. Played. Yeah. I like the way RV. that I like to manage my team is I'm sort of a run first team where I run to set up the play action pass deep to my Peregrine okay. Falcon. So okay. I'm a run first team. I play stout defense as well. When you have a run first okay. team, you got to play good deep. I am going to have 11 Howler Monkeys as my defense. Wow. Let me explain why real quickly. Yeah, that's out there. What happens to the offense when the stadium is so loud that the quarterback can't call out the play? No, it's a mess. 
Yeah, the offense has no idea what's going on. They don't know what's happening. It's it's everybody's confused. Yeah. So so what I'm going to do is I'm going to have 11 howler monkeys, which are the loudest mammal with an audible frequency. There's a bat that's louder called a bulldog bat. But the howler monkey makes a call of up to 140 decibels, which means that causes instant permanent ear damage if you're standing too close to it. Okay. 11 of those? A cacophony <laughs> of howler monkeys? 140 yeah, decibels each? Have fun getting brutal. your play into your gorilla. Ritep, you're fucking done, bro. Okay. Mm. I have a golden eagle. Patrick, right I now. won! I have the best Yeah, team. it's pretty good. It's different. It's different. I mean, elephants are very sensitive to hearing, too. It's a different play. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm mean, standing on the sidelines, getting their ears blasted out. Yeah, it's different. The only yeah. problem is that your rhino will not be able to hold a football in its three toes because they are just toes. And if it goes into the mouth of a rhinoceros, it's never coming out. Doesn't count. Not valid. So I will be choosing my next pick, and it will be the one that def- that that 100% wow. solidifies the oh. fact that my gorilla is going to make a fucking needlepoint accurate throw to my fucking eagle. And okay. it actually has nothing to do with that. I'm going with hippos as my defense. <laughs> <laughs> so just, you, you just, you just kind of rambled I a bunch. Uh, yeah, like it does in line, too many I, rolling rocks, me thinks. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm going with hippos as my uh, defensive That's line. Good. They're fucking aggressive. They can open their mouths bigger than either of you two mm. assholes can open your mouths. And yeah. they fucking will shit and spin shit Spray. all over you. Uh, and everything, not just you, that's the a, football, that's a everything. That's a hell of a hey, D. Hey, Forrest, real quick, that's a great pick, uh, except one thing I was thinking about. Um, what's a good way to get away from a hippo? What, how zigzag. should you run? Zigzag. 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 They're not, the lateral agility is not very good? No, it's very good. 11 very of poor. them, mate? When you're, the when you're playing football, the football field like, is only so wide, do people move 20 them? yards. You know, I'm not a big sports guy, but my understanding is in all sports, you always just run in a perfectly straight line. <laughs> do, you, do you think that yeah. your rhinoceros is somehow going to be juking my 11 hippos that are uh, when your running back is trying to, <laughs> to get your too, fucking football through the O-line of 11 hippos? Touche. Okay. okay. Well, okay. well said. All right, Forrest, you're up for two more. What do you got? How are you going to round yeah, it Yeah, this is rough because I had, I had a strategy going in that I was going to go big and bold with my running back, my quarterback, and my defense, right? Gorillas off the table, rhinos off the table. Those are, those are stolen from me. <laughs> I've got my elephants on my D. Glad I picked them early. Now I've got a cheater, cheetah as receiver, which I'm happy about. I've got some speed. But I this whole idea of just being the meatiest team on the pitch, is, it's out the window now. So I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to mix it up. We've just, we've just discussed how agility is going to be a huge factor. Mm-hmm. So my running back, he's not going to play a game of... A game of Who's Dick's bigger? Right, he's not going to play a game of let me put my shoulder down and run through you anymore. I lost that art. I lost that fight guy. when the yeah yeah I got I got to I got to. I'm just so showing I, that it's not me who's clicking the pen. I want oh, yeah, all, that was me. everyone. That was me. Well played. Well played. Right. Um, so yeah, so I need something with some speed. So I am going for uh, the black racer as my running back, which is the fastest snake. It's a North American snake. You know, it is just, it's insanely, min- so it's one of the few snakes that I can barely catch. I've made, I've m- probably seen 200 Ooh. and caught five because when I see one, the speed and maneuverability, the way they can turn on a dime, it's mind blowing. So I just, I got to get something that's going to weave, you know, it can duck and dodge. It, it maybe, maybe you'll get away from these eagles that are flying around. Uh, it's definitely going to get through these these stampedes of rhinos and hippopotami. Um, so that's the only it's the only thing I can do. So I've picked a black racer as my okay. running back. Okay. It's a different play. Yeah. And uh, my QB going for something. I'm gonna. There's only one way I win this game right now because I my team's a mess and that's <laughs> with some smarts. It's with some yeah. smarts. And yeah. we all know that the smarts come out of the QB calling the plays. So I'm going for a chimpanzee, incredibly intelligent animal, very athletic. Also, let me note, 
the only creature that we have ever shown to actually use tools, right? And throw rocks and spears and things like that. So he's got a leg up in the old ball toss game. So Not yeah, with I've 11 got rhinos cheetah. coming at him or 11 hippos, mate. Well, let's see. Let me run down my team, then, we'll, then we can let everybody vote. So for the last time, my team, I've got a receiver at Cheetah. I've got a running back, which is a black racer snake. I've got a QB that's chimpanzee and an impenetrable 11 bull elephant defense. Okay. okay. It's, it's not terrible. You, you have a shot. You it's, have a it's, shot. It's, it's good. I've got uh, so far a gorilla as my QB, a golden yep. eagle as my very wide receiver, and a uh, defense made up of 11 hippos, which, if my calculations are correct, is about 2 million pounds of <laughs> defense. So, it's not right, but sure. <laughs> my... <clears throat> Final pick, is that correct? Is that how this works? This is your yes. final pick, and you and need a running back. He will back. be a running dumb back. Dumb. He or she will be a running back. And it is, my friends, a good one. It is an animal that is Jesus very Christ. used to delivering football-sized items into end zones, if you know what I mean. My running back will be the classic Stork. I'm going to have a stork scoop up <laughs> the football from my gorilla. He will fly over all, unless Pat has an army of birds for his, for his, uh, for his fucking defensive line. It'll be unstoppable. He will drop his package into the end zone, much like a football superstar spikes the and ball just, on the winning point. And just to be clear, this isn't like a particular species of stork. This is like the storybook child stork that has the little bandana that it carries with the ball in it. Probably a female yes, stork. Yes, I don't it is. discriminate. Yeah. This is probably a pink-colored stork. It uh, doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, the stork will evade all that's defense. A, that's a fun pick. That's uh, that's out there. All right. Very good. Yeah. Very good. Uh, all right. Papa I P, will, let's round us out. I'm going to round it out. I still need a QB. And you do. Normally, I would I would base my team around. You start with a QB and then you build based on their skill set. But I knew no right. one was going to take this, and I defy any of the Brosners to ding me for this because this is the right pick. <laughs> I like a very accurate quarterback. I'm not one of those people who goes for like the big armed QB who is you know his accuracy shit. Right, just the hot guy QB, the every yeah, high school QB. Yeah, exactly. How many draft busts have we seen where they got the big arm but they could never get the accuracy? I want someone with built-in accuracy, who's going <laughs> to okay. deliver balls accurately to my receiver that's flying at 250 miles an hour. So, my quarterback is the archer fish. Wow, that's an yep. interesting call. Elaborate. So, yeah. The archer fish is a fish that shoots these water bombs, right? It sticks its lips above the surface. It has a groove in the roof of its mouth. Well, can you pull up a turns its, fish? It turns They're its tongue into animal. this funnel. And what it does is it shoots this stream of water, which starts as a stream of water, but actually pushes the water in the back faster than the water in the front, so that by the time it hits the thing it's trying to knock out of the tree, it's just a ball of water. But here's mm -hmm. the crazy thing about the archer fish. <laughs> they never miss. No, they never miss. Are you going to have it in miss. a fish tank? Are you going to have it in a fish tank? Yeah, it'll be in a fish tank that'll get okay. moved by the refs each time the they get a first down. Crush it? Okay, all right. <laughs> it is so accurate it's a cool pick. that That's a cool only pick. baby archer fish miss. They, by the time they're adults, they hit the first shot every time. Okay. They fucking they're, knock flies out of the air, shit out do. of trees. They do. Archer fish. Guys, a good pick. I, I'm not. I'm not ready to end this. I need to do the bonus pick. What will be your offensive line to protect your quarterback? Because right now, I'm just envisioning rhinos and hippos <laughs> destroying the archer fish, yeah. destroying fucking gorilla. Uh, wow. Okay, bonus pick. Uh, shit. Uh, How yeah, are you going to defend line? this archer fish, man? Give him time to get the fucking ball to the fucking paragon well, falcon. I'm comfortable with my quarterback being in a fish tank. But I obviously can't yeah. have my offensive line be in glass because they won't be able to move, so I can't have a blue whale. Uh, right. Shit. Yeah, Forrest's defense is going to be a problem with those it bull is. elephants. It really is. Well, here's the one thing I do know that elephants don't like. 
Snakes, baby. I'm going Black Mamba. Elephants are scared of snakes. They don't like stepping on them. I'm going to okay. fan out five Black Mambas, and hopefully that will keep Forrest's defense at bay. Okay. That's my team. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, back to no, me. No, we don't need the 50-second build-up. No build-up, but <laughs> shut your mouth. Everybody loves that more than the whole podcast, you top-knotted idiot. Um, the So my, uh, my defense, now I'm going to take two minutes and 50 seconds. No, I'm going to go straight up right here. I'm going to have a fucking offensive line of grizzly bears. Fuck it. Mm, interesting. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. My O-line... Swarm of pissed off bees. <laughs> oh. They're just gonna fly through everything, just sting the shit out of your quarter- quarterbacks. That's They're good. gonna drop the ball. I'm gonna come in. We're good. Hippos man. aren't I got gonna an give a shit of... though. Neither will rhinos. What's that? Hippos and rhinos aren't gonna give a shit about your bees. No, because they're just gonna fly right past them and hit your QB. <laughs> they're not gonna. They're not gonna. They're not gonna. What are they gonna do? A bunch of bunch of bees. Um, okay. Yeah, so fine. yeah, that's. You know, I think I actually think the bonus round really helped me there. If you agree, why don't you go onto iTunes, comment on this YouTube video that you happen to be watching? If you're watching on YouTube, let us know who won. Uh, I guess behind Super Bowl Sunday, who would be the animal team winner of our football game battle royale? I think that was a really fun one. And yeah, uh, yeah, that's good and stuff. Real quick before we sign off, just quick answer. Super Bowl Sunday, you know, we are recording this Saturday because normally we do Monday morning, but blah, blah, blah. Right. Uh, what's going to be your go-to dirty, disgusting, despicable, shameful food that you guys are going to eat uh, for the Super Bowl? What's your, what's your go-to Super Bowl food tomorrow? Pizza. Like, like, and, and not like a pizza, <laughs> like six pizzas of different variety, <laughs> like a barbecue chicken. We talking, mm. I'm talking, mm, talking jalapeno one. and pepperoni, just like a mess of pizzas where I'm like, all right. And the nice thing about doing pizza is, like, I don't have to eat it all in the first 10 minutes. Like, you, you eat wings an hour later, and you're like, ugh, cold wings. You eat pizza, pizza at the end of the game, and you're like, this is still delicious. And I can eat yeah. 24 slices of pizza over the course of two and a half hours, and yes. I will. Okay. Very smart. Ritep, what are you going to do? Well, we know what I'm going to do, and it's going to be we at, at yeah. least $155 worth of Taco Bell. And they have a $5 yeah. cravings box, which is chock full. So it will be at least a million pounds of food. Cheers, mate. Nice. Like a blue <laughs> whale. Pizza for me, too. I, it's nice. funny because I was planning a menu out for us. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I'll do like old bases and tots. I'll do this. I'm going to make chips and dip. And then I was like, shit, if I eat a lot of chips and dip or a lot of tots, I'm done. I'm stuck. That's it. I'm so bloated. Yep. yep. I need multiple pizzas, buffalo chicken. Pepperoni yep. and jalapeno. That's it. And I can just pick at those leisurely over the course of five, six hours. Right. Uh, until I feel terrible about myself and then go to bed and get terrible sleep because I'm disgusted. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you'll cry a little when you go to bed yeah. that night, but it's yeah. worth it. You know, worth it. It, it, it. It's the one day a week that you do it. The one day a year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it is the one day a week. All right, guys. What a good one. Well, Loved this. Don't say goodnight yeah. yet because we have to tell everybody where to go. Make sure you go to Wild Times Pod, the Wild Times Podcast.com forward slash info for all the links to the merch, to the Discord, to the videos, to listen anywhere iTunes, Podbean, uh, Spotify. And uh, you can go to wildtimes.club to join the Discord. Bunch of uh, wildlife and adventure peeps in there. It is a fun-ass community. I have 200 uh, fucking notifications in there as oh, we speak. Oh, also, for, for the people who most people listen on iTunes and don't do the YouTube, for those who entered, who commented, and uh, thus entered the giveaways for the electric sunglasses... Uh, which are like $200 sunglasses and uh, the free Wild Times merch. We did a daily video this past week on the YouTube, uh, and that's the only way to find out if you won. That's right. So go to YouTube. Uh, what's our? How do they get us on YouTube? You can go to the Wild Times I, I want to make sure they com, claim the prize. The Wild Times Podcast.com forward slash YouTube will get you there. And um, also, I had one more thing to say, but I can't remember because I've had too many beers. <laughs> Good night. Yep. Good night. Good night. Oh, tell a friend. Good night.